today we are doing the glass for our cab. This glass, glass, glass. So basically what he did is glass guys came out here this morning. We missed them on the video, but you put a bunch of cardboard up. This is why I love flat glass. It's easy to work with. You put a bunch of cardboard up, you cut the cardboard out to the dimension, take the cardboard in the glass shop, and we'll go have a look at them and show you how the process of cutting flat glass works. Okay, here at Best Value Glass. So we're gonna go in there and see what's going on with this glass. They took all the cardboard, got it down here, and we were lucky enough that they said, yeah, come in here, see how we do it. So here they got the window traced out. Now they're gonna cut around those lines, lay it down onto a piece of glass, and then you Trace cut the glass. Yeah. I'm actually really curious how the glass gets like cut and bent into a circle. You'll like it. Yeah, with flat glass, somebody that's a professional like this could actually get it made. Like, well, I imagine you had to make a curved piece of glass. And like, what's the difference of like a curved windshield versus like a flat one for cost, roughly? Big. <laughs> Lots, yeah. Yeah, when they're OEM, they're so expensive. And aftermarket, they're basically reverse engineered for their measurements and everything. So they'll take an OEM and then they'll get their measurements, get their stuff, and then make a mold from it. And then that's what makes it after. Oh, okay. And then the first few years of the vehicles out there, the other guys haven't been able to make their molds and mass produce yet. And yeah. they get a huge amount when it's brand new. Yeah. Or for insurance warranty claims, I guess, when the person isn't paying the bill. Yeah, exactly. Because there's two layers of glass, you have to cut on each side. You start the crack on the edge that you finish the cut on, and then you just direct the crack across the score line. Cut the other side, and the fun part, ethyl alcohol. That loosens up the polyvinyl center. so much for showing us everything. Yeah, we'll see you in the back of the shop, I guess. Right now we're just mounting all these cab mounts on. Rear cab mounts, front cab mounts, airbags go on top, but we're getting ready to put that cab on. So we just changed them out. Now that everything is done, everything is painted, we're putting in the proper grade eight bolts. Hopefully once this is on, it doesn't have to come off anymore. There's so many of them laying around. Say good. Okay, so plan here, we're gonna get this cab on. So we got the cab bolts ready. We'll put one cab bolt each by each thing. Once we get the cab in the air, we'll stick the bolts through the cab. Then we can have the bolts used as a guide to guide that cab in. We'll put one person on each of the four corners. So one person on each corner, come into the backhoe, pick it up via that sling that's up there, and yeah. I had that rigged up, Dad. Uh, we figured out the exact way that it picks it up perfect. You need a little bit of support on the back because the back is actually, for some reason, heavier. So if I sling it through, uh, like this, like here, and then we just need our shackle. That seems to pick it up, because it mainly picks up on this beam, but then the tail stops the back end from sagging. Although we did put everything in the dash in the front, but we also had electrical in the back, so. Obviously nobody stick their hands anywhere.
Or is that wrench? Big T? Yeah, I don't see that. Here. Top one or down one? Bottom one. Yeah. My side just needs to get the uh, rubber drop down back into its home. Bag. Yeah, once the weight of the cab is on. Okay, I need a uh, yeah, nylon. Oh, nylon? Yeah, check on the box behind it. That's leveling it out. No. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's almost level. Really? Yeah. Oh, it just Let's looks just real high from inside the back it's a much better support across both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah. From the backhoe from here, it looks like it's leaning way up. That might just be the, for me, so. No, it, it looks really good. No, the floor grab the, You can grab the torpedo level, the little blue one right. Uh, just measure the distance to the frame rail, front and back. 14 and a quarter. Yeah, the back's up by like two inches. Could be them. Well, that's all right, because we're going to drop it down onto things, so. 13 and a half, 14 and a quarter, 13 and a half front, 14 and a quarter. So it's back. two inches too high? No. Oh, half inch. Half inch too high? Is that what, is that what your math was? Yeah. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, sounds good. Great. Okay, so I want to hop up there and. Drilling the glass isn't installed yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit, hey? Yeah. Bring it down just a cut. Yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, I gotta figure my way. Oh, there's a ladder. There's Big Ray. Yeah, ladder. It's Andy Princess. It's Daniel. The squad. I don't know how to turn this off, so I'm just gonna give it to Theron like this. So you're doing the louvers, because that's what it is. Just mm -hmm. angled pieces, slice, slice. No, that's a louver. Yeah. So you got your louvers. You have mesh behind the louvers. Yeah. And then this has to be in line with your the edge of your outmost edge of the louver to look proper mm -hmm. so this would almost come straight down off of what we're doing right now well we've been mounting the cab uh, my dad and Ray here have been working on our front grill so this is the front Edison grill halfway done I'd say that's starting to look like a truck again it looks really tall with no side steps or things but it's roughly about the exact same height as a Western Star logging truck but the top of the cab is about the same height as like a Western Star logging truck cab about the same height, about two, three inches smaller than a Peterbilt cab, but it's it looks taller with nothing on it. So this is voice. TikToks of the house mover. <laughs> you might have seen him moving in cr crazy oversized loads across oceans, two Real cities. Cool. Now this is gonna be this is gonna be obviously see through as well, yeah. right? Are you gonna use plexi or are you gonna use glass? Can't use plexi. I wanted It'll to use yeah, a scar up and right. Yeah, yeah. Not legal on the front. You can use plexi on a rear window. Not. They say it. Well, fire department's got to cut a guy out. They can't smash the window and well, whatever. I like the visibility. It's not bad. You can tint it out so no one's easy playing with yourself. People that are on the highway don't understand when you're in the bush or you're low bedding. And you got to get that steer axle within like a, just a Just to keep your trailer from going down. Yeah. <laughs> like there should be, you know what? If a guy pulls onto a set of scales and blows a steer tire on the scales with this thing, like there's no hope for him. Um, I tell you that I love the center cab just because I know tight spaces and vehicles. It's what I do. It's what I've been around. Mm -hmm. And being able to see everything up front is huge. And it kind of it kind of begs the the question why you don't see this more often why hasn't why hasn't it really been thought of on on a day to day basis? Well, Tesla did it, but <laughs> they did it and they made the cab super super wide, massive. You'll never have the visibility. And then if you're going center seating, why not put like the loader the skitter windows in there, the lower windows? If you're center seating, yep. put the side windows in. Like all Tesla had to do was look at every other piece of equipment that's center seating. Loaders, graders, dozers, skidders. There's a reason. They all have the lower windows. Like, guys, you don't need to reinvent anything. If you're doing center seating, just make a dozer. Uh, we just got the new studs put in. Now we're gonna see if the new studs were long enough and if it works. This is the moment of truth. We were hung up, the aluminum wheels were a lot thicker, our studs were not long enough. We managed to source longer studs. Ooh, yeah, I see quite a bit sticking out there. A bit, but not a ton. 
It's more. We're like it's, it's going to be close. If we got the low profile, oh, it'll be dude, enough. We're still like a quarter inch of the way. Oh, we just didn't have it. Yeah. Here, here. No, you no, no. shut up. Let me tighten that, and we'll okay. Wiggle the tires as I go. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Pull on. We won't be okay. Yeah, I think we got it. Nice. How's it look? We did it. We got thread well, sticking out. Like it belongs yeah. there, we got guys. Oh yes, yes. Just past the edge of the nut. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, just. Millimeters. <laughs> Today ended well. I said that. I'm like, yesterday started really great and went so downhill. I literally told Theron this morning, I'm like, you watch. Today's going to start real crappy and just go uphill from there. And it did. We had the wrong nuts. <laughs> we, had, we ended up with a high profile one. Then they charged us way too much for the other ones because I think that was a mistake. There's no way that a low profile nut's $27 and a regular nut's $2.30. I think they charge us for a box of 10 instead of individual. Nuts for the cab mounts, got the wrong nuts. I like went in there, got it, had said that on the box. They were different ones inside the box. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but then the end of the day, the generator, we got confirmed the generator is on its way to Canada. It's just waiting on a customs clearance and they're gonna expedite it for us. So that's good. We got the cab on, the glass was cut. We got the tires on and the batteries arrived. They show up to the, they shown up in the warehouse in Kamloops. So we'll be picking them up in the morning. So for a really crappy day yesterday, today turned out pretty good. Okay, end of the day update here. So the glass people got back to me. They ran long. It's kind of the end of the day, five o'clock. They're not gonna be able to make it out. They're gonna put the glass in at a later date. I kind of told them no hurry. It's not like we need the glass right away. It's just cut, it's ready to go. When you can get out here, you get out here. But the exciting thing, the wheel studs fit, we got the tires on, we got the cab on. Because the generator got shipped to Minneapolis instead of Canada, I'm like, okay, that's gonna be a few weeks. We were gonna wait put the cab on, wait to put the cab on till we can put the generator on, because it's just easier without the cab in the way, but I'm not gonna wait a few weeks. We'll work around it. Just like putting a transmission. You don't take a cab off the truck to put a transmission in, so whatever. But cab is on, tires are on on one axle. And the glass is made. So all in all, today went pretty good for how terrible yesterday went.